Health Now, probiotics versus prebiotics. Oftentimes, people confuse the two. But what is clear is the strong demand worldwide. Probiotics are much more popular. In 2022, the global market reached a value of about $58 billion. By the year 2027, the market for probiotics is expected to reach more than $85 billion. That's according to Statista. But what exactly are probiotics and how are they different from prebiotics? How do you know if you need them and what are the risks? Joining me now is Dr. Natasha Bouillon, National Medical Director of One Medical. I love this topic because mm -hmm. it always seems so confusing. Yes. Explain the difference between the two. Yes, so probiotics are live bacteria or yeast and it's good for our gut. So a lot of people don't realize our gut does more than just digestion. Mm -hmm. Our gut also helps regulate our metabolism. It can help with um, our mental health actually. Yeah. It does help with hormone regulation. And so our gut plays a big role in our immune system and our overall health, probiotics can help restore a good health gut microbiome. Okay. Now, prebiotics, on the other hand, they are the food for probiotics. Okay, the food for probiotics. Exactly. All right, should you take them every day? Like I always hear people. You know, I hear this all the time. People ask me all the time, save your money. Just for general health and wellness, people do not need to take a probiotic every single day. Wow. What we found is that probiotics are good for specific conditions. Mm -hmm. And you can get probiotics from food or from a pill. Yes. But these conditions are if somebody has something like IBS. We we found okay. that people with IBS, if they take a probiotic for eight weeks, it reduces things like abdominal cramping and pain. Oh. We've also found it's good if someone has a stomach bug. And so if you're having some loose stools or diarrhea, taking a probiotic can shorten a stomach flu by about 25 hours. So that's effective. Okay. I always tell my patients when you're taking an antibiotic, take a probiotic with it because the antibiotic, oh. it wipes out all of the good bacteria in your gut. Yes. And so taking the probiotic can help restore that as well. Okay. And here's one that people never think about, but for people who have gum disease, a lot of folks out there have gum disease. If you take a probiotic, it helps restore good bacteria into your saliva, into the oral flora, which uh -huh. is helpful. And then for kids, really the evidence shows the best time for a child to take a probiotic is if they have constipation. Okay, I was asking you about that during yeah. the commercial break. Not when they have a tummy ache, right. it's more for constipation. It's really more for constipation. Generally, okay. kids don't need to be taking probiotics. Okay, here's my question though. You always see and hear about the refrigerated yeah. versus you know over the counter. Right, what, yeah. Is one better than the other? One's not better than the other. So this is what's so confusing. There's probiotic pills, yes. and there's all kinds of information on these pills. Like there's the CFUs, the units, it's refrigerated. So confusing. What really matters is the actual strains of probiotic that are in these medications. Okay. And so lactobacillus acidophilus, that's something that's really, really good for our gut. Uh -huh. And bifidobacterium, also good for our gut. Uh -huh. I generally recommend when people take that, one billion units is sufficient. They don't need 50 billion units. Right. And then shelf stable versus uh, refrigerated, refrigerated yeah. doesn't really make a huge difference as long as it has the right number of strains in them. Okay. And as long as you're reading the expiration date. Ooh, That's key. that yeah. is true. Okay, talk about some of the foods that we can actually get you know, probiotics yes. naturally. Yes, yeah, products. so another way to save your money, you don't need to actually buy probiotic pills to yeah. get probiotics. You can get them in foods pretty easily. So mm -hmm. foods like yogurt, kombucha, kefir, so foods and drinks have like miso soup, cottage cheese. Oh. These all come with probiotics, and so if you start to incorporate foods into your diet, okay. there's also foods that have prebiotics, so like oh. legumes, asparagus, onions, and so you can have kind of a diet that's rich in both prebiotics and probiotics, and you don't need to reach for a pill. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. there's a couple of myths that I want to go yeah. over with mm -hmm. you. You talked about, you know, like the, um, some of the foods that, they, yeah. that they're in, yeah. but not all fermented foods have Correct. a probiotic. Yeah, that's always confusing to people. So some people think anything that's fermented, I yes. would get my probiotics from. And so kombucha is a good example. That does have probiotics. But sourdough bread, it's fermented, but it doesn't have probiotics in it. Oh. Like beer is another one. It's really the way the food is processed. Mm -hmm. It ends up killing off the probiotics. And so not all fermented foods have probiotics. And so just do your research on those. Okay, do probiotics mm -hmm. boost your immunity? I hear that one a lot. That's a myth. Um, oh. Just by taking a probiotic, it doesn't just boost your immune system. Mm -hmm. And so people have looked at, you know, if I'm sick, if I'm not feeling well, if I pop a probiotic, will it help me get better? Really only helps for stomach flu. It doesn't help for general, like, respiratory infections. So it doesn't really help for general immune system. Is more better? 
No, and this is another myth because people will look at 50 billion units, right. 100 billion units. They're trying to get the highest units and billions of the strain. Yeah. And really, it's the actual quality of the strain that matters. And we do want a, mini, a minimum of a billion units. You don't want lower than that. But getting up much higher, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Okay, real, real quick. Yeah. What about the time? Does it work immediately or how long should we expect? No, it does take a couple of days to kick in and change the flora. And so people will sometimes take a probiotic and think, I'm going to feel better today or I'll feel great today. Right. That's not the way it works um, because it's really changing that gut flora. So you got to give it a few days for it to be effective. Excellent information. Yeah. Dr. Natasha, of always course. great to have you Thanks back. Thanks so much. It's Thank good to see you. you.